Oh, and here is this one. May every sunrise hold more promise and every sunset hold more peace. One of my favorite quotes. And so this one is a little unusual because what I did, and I don't think I've, I really don't remember ever doing this before, is I put a loop down at the bottom of this quote that I stitched in and then the actual sari ribbon that goes around the book, you would push back through this little paper area and then when you're done writing and then you would stick it through that loop and then go ahead and twirl it in there. And I, I don't think I've ever had one where you had, where the owner of the book, the keeper of the journal, actually had to push it through something. But this quote was so long and had a nice space to it that it's easy to go ahead and get your fingers in and out of there. When I have used this before, actually I'm not sure if I've ever used this quote on a journal before. I know I've done it on kindness cards and bookmarks. But if I had one that was this long before, what I would normally do is kind of stitch in different places up and down. But I didn't do that on this one. So it's nice and open and you can go ahead and stick your, um, your sari ribbon through there and then down through the loop. This one starts out with a hydrangea leaf and a daisy on the cover. So I know I'm starting out with just some fabulous fun on there. And there's some blueberries in here. The blueberries on that on that leaf. These are some hydrangeas and daisies and rose petals and ferns and some astromerias and gorgeous rose leaves. This has purple potato in it. So this is a portion of a purple potato. This is a hydrangea, a little portion of a hydrangea. There's another daisy. So lots of fun in here. These are geraniums in here. These little, these little parts right there that made that part, those little stains. And those are some, there's some also some little, um, some smaller rose petals, like those mini rose buds. There's a blueberry, hydrangea leaves, daisy. The blueberries leave stain and they leave texture. So the moisture that comes out of them leave a lot of texture when they bind to the pages. Look at the beautiful colors on this page. Gorgeous. So some geraniums right there and these geraniums turned blue because of being near the blueberries and yet these are also geraniums right around there too. Here's another purple potato. This is also a slice of a potato, but it didn't leave much color, but it did mask a space. So, rose leaves, geraniums, daisies, rose petals, hydrangea leaves, potato. So these white circle areas, uh, if they didn't turn blue, then they're kind of whitish like the moon which is really pretty and that's all purple potato and more of the same daisies and blueberries and gorgeousness ferns in here look at this beautiful piece right here this is part of a leaf down here some ferns some some daisies so these are, um, this is a daisy down here, and if you can see, I'm not sure you can see, but these are different layers. So what I did, oh, actually, no, I'm sorry, it's not a daisy, it's a carnation. It's a carnation. I pop carnations apart, and the reason why, sometimes daisies look that same way, but I could see right, this is the, re, the mirrored image of it, and you can see the ruffle. Right there, that's, those are carnations. And so if you've ever taken a carnation and, and broken it basically, made it flat, um, you, you'll see all these teeny tiny little petals that have a ruffle on one end and then they narrow down into the center. And that's what that is. And so the way I have to do, do carnations is kind of, I have to break them and then I have to put them back together on top of the surface. This is again a potato right there. I know, I do love to use potatoes and blueberries. And I got into using edibles when I was doing 
food and wine festival at Epcot and everything had to have some kind of connection to food and wine and um, I used edible like blueberries and um, the potatoes and I used pumpkin and pomegranate and um, onions and oh different leaves kale and things like that there's a daisy blueberry ferns right here again more geraniums a lot of times the geraniums will turn uh, a really pretty pink but you can tell when they're mixed with certain other plants they come out a little differently so you just it you just never know it's very serendipitous I mean I know because I've done it for so many years but I so I kind of get the idea of what's gonna happen um, they they turned like this because honestly because of the soupiness from the blueberries that come out the the juice from the blueberries so they get kind of sticky but there's also almost like a silvery sheen when that happens and I think that's kind of neat some ferns some rose petals rose leaves hydrangeas astromerias that's turned purple there's some more um, blueberries there's some carnation petals mixed in down here some daisies I don't use carnations a lot um, I, I personally am not a huge fan of carnations and I always try to use colors or plants that are naturally colored and a lot of times obviously carnations are, are sprayed so I don't use anything that's sprayed so there's um, there are just some bits and pieces of some blueberries and then I have some more daisies and blueberries and rose petals and rose leaves and astromeria and ferns and all kinds of gorgeousness oh my gosh this is a great book for drawing I've noticed a lot through here and I, I haven't really pulled out any as many images but this I've noticed that it's a good book for drawing because of the space that is actually without plant stains they just or without the stronger plant stains so like these are very strong I consider those and then here I'm not even sure you can see these but this is a daisy stain down here and I'm wondering if I can pull it up if you can see it come into focus a little bit more so you can see all these textures back there and one of the things when I draw on my in my books I love to have this very light substrate to draw on and so as I'm looking through this book I, I I'm really enjoying the images that are going through my mind that I would draw on here but of course it's up to the person who becomes the keeper of these journals and I always call them keepers because I feel like the journals find you and I witnessed that so much in Disney at Epcot especially when people would make a beeline to a one specific journal that they felt that energy pulling them in and I really do feel like these journals speak to you and look at that this is just a gorgeous this is a layer on top of a layer so this is a leaf that is I think it's a actually a big geranium leaf and then there's a daisy on top of it and how gorgeous is that these are astromerias put together beautiful but yes you know you get drawn in there's pine needles in this one also right down here those are all pine needles so um, this is quite quite a great book for writing for drawing for just embracing these are ginger leaves right in here those came from living with the land and yeah so this was quite an assortment of plants from that I that I harvested from Epcot on, on property right there so gorgeous 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 okay so we're gonna take this sorry sorry ribbon and just push it through under there and pull it go through the loop and above wrap it around this little part right here 
How fun is that? I'm going to tuck that back in. You know, I can never pick my favorites because I love them all. And I find uniqueness in each one of these books. So um, it's just up to the energy. And if the energy connects with its keeper, then uh, I think that's just a very blissful, blissful time for the keeper as well as the journal. The journal gets to hold all the keeper's secrets. Beautiful.